Hi guys, I'm Randy, and in today's VRS TV how-to, I'm showing you how to refill your DI resin in three quick steps. We all try our best to keep pristine water for our reef tanks, and a lot of that is made possible by using deionization resin in our water filtration units. DI resin can not only remove that last little bit of TDS from the RO membrane, but it can also remove things like phosphates, silicates, nitrates, and any remaining disinfectants like chloramines that we may not want in our tanks. Much like the other filters in our RODI units, DI resin also depletes over time and needs to be replaced. There are prepackaged resin cartridges available, but they usually come at a higher cost than one of these vacuum sealed bags, and it only takes a couple seconds to refill one. For a majority of us, one of these smaller sealed bags of DI resin will be more than enough to fill a standard 10 inch cartridge and doesn't need to be replaced too often. However, if you happen to have a poor quality source of water and burn through DI resin quickly, it may be more beneficial for you to get one of these larger bulk bags. Some reefers also like to get these bigger bags of DI resin because pound for pound they do end up being cheaper. But if you aren't using it rapidly, it may be wise to consider some sort of airtight storage option to keep it from depleting prematurely. And for those of you who have really beefed up the DI stages of your RODI unit and need to fill one of these larger canisters, buying in bulk is definitely a better choice. In order to get the job done today, we'll need a refillable DI cartridge as well as a bag of DI resin. A couple of additional tools that I've found to be very helpful are a small brush in this cheap 250 milliliter measuring cup, which I'll show you how I use later. With the cartridge upside down on our work surface, I fill it slowly by shaking and tapping the bag of DI resin. Here I'm using my hand to grasp the top edge of the cartridge, which helps to keep the threads clear as well as serves as a funnel. I could use a funnel here, but I find that using my hand works just as well and I've had a hard time finding a funnel wide enough to allow the resin to flow through quickly. Once I've got the cartridge three quarters of the way full, I stop to give it a few taps on the workbench to pack the resin as tightly as possible. Tightly packing the resin is very important to reduce the chances of channeling during water production. If you experience faster than normal DI consumption or have TDS registering after the DI stages, it can be a symptom of channeling, which occurs when an empty space develops inside of the DI canister. This empty void can expand in the canister and create a channel where higher TDS water from the RO membrane bypasses the DI resin and ends up coming out of your product water line. In order to ensure the resin is packed as tightly as possible, I like to take the bottom edge of this 250 milliliter measuring cup, which you can find in the DI resin category on our site, and forcefully push the resin down into the cartridge. I've tried other tricks here, but this cheap little cup seems to work best for me and fits perfectly into the mouth of the DI cartridge. Using a combo of the 250 mil measuring cup and a few taps of the cartridge helps to rid of any extra space and will lessen the chances of channeling. Before we close the lid on this one, we do have to account for the space that the cap and the foam pad will take up. For this, I like to take my finger and lightly scoop a small bit of resin from around the edges. This will not only help provide room for the cap, but also help to keep the threads free and clear from any stray DI beads. All I have to do now is replace the pad and the threaded cap, but just before I do that, I like to inspect the threads on the canister one last time to make sure there aren't any stray beads in them. If there are, this little brush can make quick work of removing them and also helps to ensure a tight seal. With the threads cleared, I push on the cap with even pressure from my palm and turn the canister itself to screw it into place. The same step-by-step -step process holds true for these larger cartridges, but they can be a bit difficult to pack as tightly as possible because of their size. You may need to get crafty and come up with some tools to help you pack the DI resin in the deeper parts of these cartridges. With some trial and error, I did find that this long section of PVC pipe with a cap on the end makes for a pretty good tool to pack those hard to get areas. Sometimes getting DI beads stuck in the threads of the cap is unavoidable, and when you screw the cap on, the threads don't line up properly. If this happens to you, just give it a couple of taps on the bottom and they should fall right into place. Color changing DI resin like this gives you a pretty accurate view of when your resin is depleted, but it's also a good idea to monitor its remaining life by utilizing the TDS meter. Sometimes it may look like there's some usable DI resin left, but the TDS meter will help you know for sure when it's time to swap it out. Speaking of swapping out the DI resin, using more than one stage of DI can also be very beneficial in making sure that you're producing pristine water for your tank. The additional canister can not only provide a buffer between the depleted cartridge and your final product water, but also give you some additional time in between changes when you just can't get to it right away. One last thing to mention is that much like DI resin itself, these refillable cartridges don't last forever. 
Although they can last you for many years, they should be inspected regularly. When I change out my DI resin, I like to check the black rubber seal on the top for damage. Make sure that the small sediment filter inside is secure and not loose. Check the foam pad in the cap for rips and tears. And look for any damage to the threads on the cap and the canister itself. You can also help to maintain the life of your DI resin by staying on top of your pre-filter and RO membrane changes. This can help to reduce the amount of contaminants that the DI resin will have to remove. Well guys, that wraps up this installation. If you have more questions, please don't keep them to yourself because that's what this team of reefers lives for. Give us a quick call or email, and if you need your answer in the next 60 seconds, hit us up with a chat. See you in the next episode of BRS TV How-Tos.